Welcome to Letting Go of Her podcast, where we are learning to let go of all of our past identities and finding our identity in Christ. I, your host, Maria Lopez, will take you on my faithful walk and journey into finding my true identity in Christ. Hello, hello, and welcome back to Letting Go of Her podcast. Um... Today, I feel that I am recording this a little unprepared, um, but at the same time, kind of prepared. Um, This is something that I've had on my list that I've been wanting to record for a while now. And I actually came across um, an article that was about this. And it reminded me of a blog post that I actually wrote sometime last year, but I cannot find that blog post anywhere. I think what happened was I had paid for, so, okay, I guess, side story. Um, In order to have a website, you need to pay for a domain, right? So if you want to have a website to say www.whateveryouwantedtosay.com, you have to pay for a domain. And so I had done all that. um, And this was with my last podcast. I had www.motheranxietypodcast.com. Um, and I, I kind of made it into a blog, right? So like I would release um, weekly podcasts, but then I would release every three days or every two days um, a new blog post, just kind of keeping more of an update of like what was going on based on my anxiety and my life and et cetera. Um, so this article that I read reminded me of a blog post that I wrote and I was like, okay, well, let me just kind of go back and find it so that I can read what I wrote And then, you know, make a full podcast episode about it. Um, But because I'm not using that podcast anymore, I don't need that domain anymore. So I put a stop to the payment and now everything is gone. (laughs) Um, I thought maybe like it kind of retracted itself and like saved all my things or like all my blog posts, all my drafts and stuff, not as www.motheranxietypodcast.com, but as like, you know, their free paid domain, but it did not. And I'm a little sad because I know that I wrote some pretty good blog posts on there. um, And I knew that that blog post would have been perfect for what I want to talk about this week. But you know what? It's okay. I'm going to pray that the Holy Spirit reminds me of what it is that I wrote and that I am able to kind of still portray the message as best as I can. So the article that I came across um, is actually titled, Who Would I Be If I Was Happy? And this is written by, I don't know if I'm going to butcher his name, um, Trevin Wax. Um, it, it's part of um, this website is called the gospel Coal, um, coalition.org um, and he's one of the writers for it um, and he's talking about this song that he came across by a rapper named nf um, and if you haven't heard of him he's actually really great um, think of like eminem but like a Christian Eminem. Um, I actually know a few of his songs um, prior to reading this article, and um, he just like does a really good job at like painting a picture and like painting this the whole story, and really good at like um, I don't know, just just yeah, just painting this the story, and like you can feel the emotions that he's like trying to portray in his in his music. Um, kind of similar to Eminem, if anyone has listened to Eminem, obviously Eminem is not a Christian rapper. Um, so if you go searching for his music, you will find, you know, profanity and and whatnot. But, uh, NF, um, his name is Nathan Fierstein. Okay. I don't know how to say his last name. Um, but anyways, um, he's a rapper and, um, really great music if you're going to check him out. But anyways, besides the point. Um, I came across this article called Who Would I Be If I Was Happy? And the author here, Trevin, talks about um, how he heard this song by NF called Happy. Um, And and the song talks about, um, you know, NF is like mental health issues, um, kind of just how like he's still stuck on, you know, the past, like he can't let go of things. He's still like stuck in his trauma simply because it's a familiar feeling 
Um, and so he's like, who would I be if I was happy? Like, who would I be if I let go of all of that and allow myself to be happy? And it's funny because I just made an episode about this like a few weeks ago, right? About how like I'm so used to this fight or flight um, that I'm that I'm so used to just being so negative all the time, and I'm so used to just the constant complaining that I I don't know what it's like to be quote unquote happy. I don't know what it's like to have peace in my life. Um, and that just kind of reminded me of the blog post that I wrote about, but also because this blog post um, or this article, I guess, also mentioned um, John five. And I had talked about John 5 in my blog post, um, and, and it was honestly inspired by um, my small group because we were reading, we just finished um, reading the book of John, and when we went through John 5, um, the person who was teaching kind of made a really good point, and I just kind of like piggybacked off of that um, about do you want to be healed? And, you know, obviously, yes, we all want to be healed. But do we really want to be healed? And I just pray that I am able to kind of make the connection uh, between that song, between the blog post, and between John 5. So if we look at John 5, um, and this is, uh, I guess, technically verses 1 through 17, Um, this is about the healing at the pool on the day of Sabbath. And, um, this is the pool in Bethsaida. Um, you know, the one that when it erupts, people get to it and they think that the first people that are there are going to be healed from whatever it is that, you know, they need to be healed from. And for 38 years, there was a man who was lying there. And had tried to reach the pool as soon as it started to erupt, but he could never make it. He could never make it fast enough. So in verse 6, I'm going to read verse 6 through 7. It says, When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been there a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be healed? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. And while I am going another steps down before me, Jesus said to him, get up, take up your bed and walk. So if you were like me before, (laughs) um, I would read, you know, things in the Bible and I would just be like, okay, you know, (laughs) Um, I, I would just just read it to read it, but I wouldn't read it to uh, examine it to like dwell on it right so like before if i would have read those i would have said okay so this dude has been laying there for 38 years um jesus said do you want to be healed he said well i don't have anyone to get me down there and jesus says all right well get up take your mat and and walk and then i would have just kind of kept going um but what really made me think was um when our teacher at a small group said you know when Jesus told him, do you want to be healed? He said, how did the man respond? And, you know, the man responded with like, well, I don't have anyone to help me. Like, I can't make it. I can't make it down there. I can't go down to the steps. Others get there before me. And Jesus just said, get up, take your bed and walk. So the point that I guess I'm going to try and make (laughs) throughout this podcast is how many times has Jesus asked us, do we want to be healed? And how many times have we made excuses for ourselves? Because that's what the man did, right? Like he has Jesus Christ right in front of him. Granted, at this point, Jesus is starting his ministry. Lots of people don't really know him. They do know him. They don't know what he's capable of. You know, they've heard about, you know, the prophets and everything and whatnot. But Jesus Christ is right in front of him. And Jesus Christ tells him, do you want to be healed? And this man gives him an excuse. We know who Jesus Christ is. And we know what he's capable of. So how many times have we given him excuses for anything really, right? When he says, do you, do you, do you want to, you know, 
get healed from this? Do you want that? Do you want this? And, and we just say, but no, but wait, but this, but that. I know that for me, the times that Jesus has said, do you want to be healed? What is it that I'm holding on to? What is it that I'm not willing to let go of in order to be healed? For me, it's like I, I, I'm holding on to, I don't know, this like feeling of, of revenge or, or, or this feeling of I need to make them pay or, or this feeling of like, but no, if, if I let it go, that means they win and I lose. So for me, it's like, do I really want to be healed? Or am I just saying that I want to be healed and just saying like, well, it's not my time to be healed. <laughs> you know, Jesus is going to answer my prayers in his own timing. But is it truly his own timing or is it mine? Am I still trying to manipulate the situation? Am I still trying to be the one in control? And in a sense, I am because I'm not ready to let go. In order to be truly healed, what is it that God commands of us? It's to love him and then to love our neighbors as ourselves. If we're holding on to grudges, if we're holding on to, I don't know, seeking revenge, if we're holding on to just they need to pay or justice, we're not truly loving our neighbors. Because no matter, you know, what it is they do, no matter what it is that goes on, we're supposed to still love them. It doesn't mean that you need to, um, you know, take abuse or take manipulation or take any of that, right? But, but we're supposed to love them. And we're supposed to also trust that God sees everything and trust that God will handle everything, right? Exodus 14, 14. That's, <laughs> that's one of the verses that like I live by, you know, um, just, you just need to be silent. You just need to be silent. Um, sometimes, you know, words cause more hurt. Um, sometimes, you know, sarcastic comments, sarcastic remarks, little pettiness, like that just adds more fuel to the fire. And that's not going to help anything or anyone in any situation. I know that for me, I'm, you know, at times still holding on to the, I need to make them pay, or I need them to realize what they did to me, or I need an apology. When at the end of the day, none of that is um, under my control. Um, I can't force someone to apologize. I can't force someone to see what they've done to me and which ways they've hurt me. Um, I, I can't force revenge on someone. Um, and I'm not going to go out and do something bad to someone simply because they did something bad to me. But it's that holding on to things, right? It, it's that it's that bitterness that's growing in my heart just from the anger that I still feel that is preventing myself from being fully healed. Jesus is standing right here in front of me. Like he's, he's, he's right here. He's right next to me. You know, he's, he's my pal. He has his arms around me and he's just like, do you want to be healed? And I just continue to give him excuses. I'm like, but, but no, but, but I want them to hurt like I hurt. And, 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 and I want them to feel what I feel. And I want them to be in pain. And I want them to know what they did to me. I want them to see how much I have suffered. But isn't that wanting to make myself like God? It, it, doesn't that make me want to put myself at the same level of judgment as him but i i i'm not supposed to judge i'm 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 no one i'm no one to judge but if we really just kind of take a seat and, and really think about it and really just kind of indulge in it like wanting that revenge or, or wanting them to pay per se is like saying like no god like i got this like i I'm going to make them pay for what they did to me. 
And that's putting yourself on the same level as him. And we're not. And this just kind of goes back to that episode I talked about idols. Like, am I idolizing myself as like thinking that I can cause these people to suffer in the same way that I suffered? But I, but I can't. And that is something that like, I've been realizing lately is that I'm still like holding on to, like, I'm still trying to hold on to that little slight of control. Literally, as I'm just, you know, sitting here recording this, I'm like speaking these words and I don't even know where they're coming from, but I'm just like, ouch, I'm, I'm like convicting myself right now as I'm, as I'm talking about this, because you know, I came in here being like, okay, I'm gonna talk about John five and about like, do we really want to be healed and all the excuses we make? But now I'm like, man, am I like, is this like, is this sin deeper than I'm truly realizing what it was? You know, is this like so much deeper to the point where I am idolizing revenge on someone because I, you know, because I was so hurt that I want them to hurt too. Like, Wow. (laughs) I wasn't, uh, you know, like I said, I pray before each one of these episodes. I pray that the Holy Spirit can just come in me and just, you know, help me speak all of these words. I didn't realize it was, (laughs) oh, I didn't realize that um, it was going to be this convicting, but this convicting for myself. Um, But yeah. What are you still holding on to? What is it what is it that that you can't let go of? What is it that you want out of this? Jesus is asking you, do you want to be healed? And what excuses are you giving him? Some things it's it's really easy to let go of and to give to him, right? Um like my day-to-day life. Like, all right, you know, I wake up in the morning and I'm like, Jesus, this day is for you you know, amen. (laughs) Um, and that's easy to, to give to him and, you know, whatever day it is that I have at the end of the day, I thank him no matter what, no matter if it was a good day or a bad day. Um, because I know that at night I can go to bed in peace. Um, even if I had an anxious filled day, I know that when I lay in bed, I am in peace and I can go to sleep in peace. Um, and I thank God for that every day. Um, so it's, you know, it's easy to, to, let go of certain things but some things especially those things that have wounded us um it's hard to let it's hard to let go of because i feel that sometimes in a sense we kind of even blame god right like sometimes we blame him for even having to go through that pain to begin with so sometimes it's almost like well he wasn't in control of this situation what makes you think that he's going to be in control of it after right so we hold on to this like this needing to to not let go and and holding on to this like feeling or, or it's like this hope i guess that they the people that have hurt us will hurt as bad as, as we have um but it, if we truly love our neighbors as ourselves we wouldn't want our neighbors to suffer like we did regardless of whether they were the ones that caused the suffering to begin with because i know that i was hurt and i know that i've been hurt deeply and i know and i can you know i can still remember all the nights crying myself to sleep all the days that i thought i was just worthless and useless and 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 not and not good enough right and i would i would never want someone else to feel that way i would never want anyone else to go to bed at night feeling that way crying themselves to sleep i honestly would want them to know the love and peace of god and i think that that's what it means to love your neighbor as yourself um i've suffered right I, i've been hurt i've been I've been hurt a lot i'm still <laughs> i'm still getting hurt from day to day you know <laughs> that's life um, but 
I know that in the end, I serve a very powerful and a very gracious and a very loving God. And I know that no matter how my day was, at the end of the day, I can come to him at night before I go to bed when I'm praying, when I'm journaling, and I can just thank him. Just just thank him because no matter how my day went, um, me you know, dealing with anxiety, no matter how anxiously filled my day was, I always know that at the end of the day, I'm going to be okay. But at the end of the day, God has got me. At the end of the day, I know that I can feel his peace and his love and his presence. And I look forward to that every night. Um, you know, it's just that moment, th- th- those moments actually that I can just have with God on my own when my kids are not around, they're asleep, my husband's asleep, you know, and I'm just by myself and I'm just there with my best friend and and I'm there and I'm talking to him and I'm just like, God, like, thank you. (laughs) Lately I've been, um, just journaling at night and I'm just kind of pouring it all out to him. Um, and this kind of goes hand to hand with last week's episode where I talked about the like, stop complaining. Right. And I'm trying to really just catch myself as to when I'm complaining and when I'm being self-critical, which, by the way, is a form of complaining, which I'm learning in this book that I'm reading, <laughs> which once I finish the book, I will, you know, I'll, I'll talk about it. And I'll make a whole episode about it. But um, I've been learning a lot from this book. And I'm also just learning, like, how many times something negative comes out of my mouth and how many times I complain about something, even like the smallest little things. Um, so I'm learning to just kind of holding it all in <laughs> all day. Um, and then at the end of the night, when I do have my moment with God, I'm, I'm just spilling it all out and I'm just letting him know like, Hey man, like, I don't know what's going on right now. (laughs) Um, but you know, this, this, and and that, and that, and I'm, and I'm, I'm having a conversation as I would with a friend because he is your friend. I think sometimes we forget that. I think sometimes we think, um, you know, because he is our father and sometimes we think of this like father, like authoritative figure, right? Like a scolding, like, no, don't do this. Don't do that. Right. Um, but we also forget that we have a friend in Jesus and we forget that we can talk to him and you don't have to wait till nighttime. You can talk to him any time of the day. That's the wonderful thing, right? Like you can just send him, shoot him a text message. Be like, Hey, and, and, and he'll respond. <laughs> um, he'll respond instantly. And, um, I think that's, I think that's great. So now I have to ask, do you want to be healed? Do you truly want to be healed? Or are you giving Jesus excuses? And what are those excuses? Well, what is it that you're still holding on to? What is it that you're, you want, or you're trying to get out of whatever situation you're in? Like, like, what is it? that is preventing you from just letting it go, like let go and let God, like what is preventing you from just giving it all to him? Are you seeking revenge or are you hoping that maybe they'll find some sort of pain as you did? I don't mean physical pain, but you know, um, are are you hoping that they'll, pay for it quote unquote are you hoping that they'll apologize see what they did i had a conversation with someone uh maybe last week or a few weeks ago and um you know they were they were talking about a situation and they ended it with well karma will get to them and i was like well, karma doesn't exist. <laughs> and they were like, well, you know, what comes around goes around. <laughs> and I was like, well, that's what karma technically means. But that doesn't, that doesn't really happen. That, that, that doesn't exist. Um, you know, when you die, you either go to heaven or you go to hell. And, and, and that's it. <laughs> like that, that's just, that is how it works. And I was like, but no matter what a person did, no, no matter what they did to me, I would never want anyone 
to go to hell. No matter what. And that is loving your neighbor. That is the same love that God has for you. And no matter what bad you did, no matter how much you screw up, no matter, you know, whatever you're doing, like he doesn't want you to, to, to go there. He simply just wants you to let go and surrender it all and just love him. And, and that's it above anything else. And, and just trust in him and trust in him that he will fight your battles for you. All the battles belong to the Lord. Know that he sees everything. He just he just wants you to love. And that's hard. I get it. I know. But if you just kind of narrow it down, you know, where someone was saying, well, karma this, karma that. Well, no. If you just, if you get down to the nitty gritty and you're like, heaven or hell, I would never want anyone to go to hell. And I'm going to go ahead and just finish this off with Matthew 5, um, the Sermon on the Mount. I'll start at verse 21. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to to the council and whoever says you fool will be liable to the hell of fire so if you are offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you leave your gift there before the altar and go first be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift come to terms quickly with your accuser while you're going with him to court, lest your accuser hands you over to the judge and the judge to the guard and you be put in prison. Truly, I say to you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. Old me would have read that and been like, okay. <laughs> but new me realizes that what Jesus is saying is that being angry with someone is at the same level of sin as murdering someone. Heaven or hell. If you get down to the nitty gritty, heaven or hell. So, do you want to be healed? It's time to let go. It's time to just let go of that anger and that's turning into bitterness and let go of that pettiness. Just let go and let God. Father, I just thank you. <laughs> oh, I know that these these podcast episodes serve a, a purpose. I never really realized how convicting this purpose for myself would be. Um, but thank you just for allowing me to speak your truth and, and allowing me to be able to hear what it is that I needed to hear. Lord, how powerful is the Holy Spirit that <laughs> it just comes in me and, and I'm able to just speak these words that were just so convicting to me but Lord that I hope that anyone who is still holding on to that anger and that bitterness that they are able to hear and show that all you want us to do is, is just love Lord I know that it's not easy and I know that you know that and I know that you know hard it is for us to just let everything go because we're just naturally selfish that way <laughs> but how beautiful is it that you love us and, and that you love us regardless and that you're so patient with us and we just can't and we just can't surrender it all to you lord i just i pray for everyone who is listening out there that you show them your love and your grace and your mercy today and that they are able to just Feel your presence right now. Lord, I pray that you help soften their heart, that they know that you see everything and that they know that the battle, that belongs to you and they can just let it go, and that they can live in peace and the joy that you promise that you bring to us here. 
because nothing else in this world is going to bring us that except for you. No amount of revenge, no amount of pettiness, no amount of wanting people to suffer, like no amount of anything is going to ever bring us that peace. Only you. And how amazing is it that you give that to us? Lord, I just pray for a peaceful week for everyone who's listening to this. I pray that they can feel your love. I pray this in your son's name. Amen. If you've stuck around for this long, thank you for listening to Letting Go of Her Podcast. We release new episodes every Friday at 6 a.m. PST time. If you are enjoying what you are listening to, don't forget to follow, subscribe, leave a comment, leave a review, whatever it is they can to get all the support. We are no longer on Instagram, TikTok, or on YouTube video. You can still listen to the podcast on YouTube, but we are no longer posting videos. So please do me a favor and share with all your friends or family or anyone who might be able to love this podcast as much as you do. Thank you. Today, I am learning to let go of my anger. I'm learning to let go of this idol that I have made of needing revenge. Today, I am learning to let go of the bitterness and the pettiness that I still carry in my heart because. I am a new creation.